So just one thing to think about, right, when we're watching this, uh, um, this episode is, you know, KFC. What role does it serve in this? Obviously, um, this is not a, a product placement necessarily. You know, KFC did not pay for this. It kind of makes them look not so good, but it's clearly an integration. You know, when we think about it, it's an integration into the into the storyline. So KFC isn't just there. It's a major, major part of the storyline. So if we want to think back to, you know, me talking about the film industry and stuff like that, and the differences between product placement and integration is that integration always includes some element of the product being shown and um, incorporated into the storyline. Now, this is typically paid for, but in this case, it's uh, it's a, it's a, a product integration that it that is uh, a clear um, parody um, and satire. You can just see, you know, a rip on Colonel Sanders. Uh, don't fuck me, Eric. <laughs> uh, you fat monkey. <laughs> Uh, it's just so good. So this is it. You know, we've, we've watched a ton of South Park. We'll finish out talking about uh, a few readings, chapters um, 16 and 17, that kind of go over the issues addressed in medicinal fried chicken. Um, but I think the important thing that the author talks about is like, yo, Americans have addictive personalities. And I think there's some things that are particularly American um that really reflect on consumerism um, that, you know, so much of our addiction are consuming, you know, consuming addictions. So uh, shopping, um, you know, uh, video games. I'm looking at some of y'all, um, you know, like all of these addictive habits. Now they exist for sure in, in other countries, but um, America is a particularly um, addicted country addicted to um, you know fast food um, you know addicted to uh, you know various sports uh, whatever whatever have you it's part of you know we're probably one of the most consumerist if not the most consumerist country uh, in in the world um, but I mean like can you encourage healthy eating um, by regulating fast food I mean you see all these things where like you know, in, in school, they try to regulate what's in the, um, you know, no sodas in the, um, in the vending machines, you know, have healthy offerings at lunch, etc. But the real question is, is if you get, if you, you know, regulate where uh, fast food chains can appear and you regulate them to only, um, you know, higher income areas where, Maybe the presumption is that people will make more educated, better decisions, um, you know, about what they eat is some bullshit, um, you know. But I, I do think, like, you know, uh, can can you, you know, is is by by getting rid of affordable, um, I mean, that's the thing, affordable, convenient food, um, you know, is that going to make people like go to Whole Foods? You know, uh, is that are people going to eat healthier because they can't get that get that stuff? I don't I don't know I don't know about that. And in South Park, they show no. Like Cartman will go to great extents to get his KFC. Now, clearly that's hyperbolic, but I mean you can really think about some some of that some of those elements there of like you know by telling someone they can't have cannabis. Are they not going to find ways to get it? I mean, people always find ways to get what they what they want and what they're addicted to, and 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 you know, should we make it easier to get? You know, because does that better for society? Um, but I think you know, the author talks about how this this episode, medicinal fried chicken specifically, you know, shows the contrast. Um, between and attention between you know the standards of community so social standards um you know community community standards um and our individual rights so you know it really puts at at tension you know like this this the, the concept of a healthy community 
versus a healthy or not healthy individual. And, you know, will, um, will, you know, trying to make things healthier for the community make for healthy individuals? And will individuals make the healthy choice, you know? Um, and what does it mean to strip people of their rights of choice um, at the expense of, of a community? And what's right and not right here? Okay, so John Stuart Mill, we, we've heard a lot about this guy, had a concept called the Liberty Principle, okay? Um, and his basic idea was like a healthy society, um, you know, or the levels of health, mental health, physical health, um, overall cohesiveness of a community or a society depends on, you know, um, how free people are, how much liberty people have to make their own choices. The concept here is that more regulation of our bodies and our choices creates an unhappy or a less, you know, a less well society. Um, because it forces the maybe unhealthy choices underground. It makes them uh, worse. It makes them less healthy. Um, I think, you know, and it really puts the element of trust in government. That government's going to make the right decisions for us. Just look at this COVID-19 shit. Is the federal government, is our state or your state government making the right choices for you? And you have to put trust in them that they're going to make the right choices on your behalf and for the, you know, be, the, the best of everybody. You know, what's good for everybody with, within a, a society and what is right. And that's the challenge is we don't determine what's right. We vote people in who then determine what's right for us. So we have to have a lot of faith that they will make the best decisions uh, for us. But you clearly see in moments of stress and when it has to deal with our physical, emotional health that maybe governments don't make the greatest, um, you know, choices. But it really, you know, I think this, this, this thing here is like, you know, can those who represent the community make the right choices that infringe on our individual rights and liberties um, that are right and the best for society. And by taking away that freedom, does it make the society, the whole, the community better? So what we have with, you know, um, the, this episode and many of the South Park episodes is this tension between the community, the overall health of the unit, and the nodes within the unit and their freedom. And a libertarian viewpoint really is about weighing those two things and always will probably err on the side of the, the individual, that freedom is so important. But we have to think about this, this very important question is who who does our bodies belong to? Is it our private property? Who has the right to tell us what we can and can't do with our bodies? And this is just a, a fascinating thing to, to think about in so, so many ways because there's no regulations really on plastic surgery or things, things, like, things like that, but they do regulate sex. So sex workers, you know, like things like prostitution are in most states, you know, illegal. But in the same places, you, you know, you can um, get, you know, face implants and ear implants or nose jobs or, or whatever. But like, you think of things of, uh, you know, dealing, dealing with Planned Parenthood and abortion and it also puts this, this to, the, to, to the test is, are you able to make the choices about what happens to your, your body and, and therefore your life? And a libertarian philosophy would, would pretty much hold that you should have that freedom to make those choices, that you should have freedom of choice. Um, 
because it's your it's your body unless that freedom of choice right is bad for society that people making if everybody makes the same bad decision you know um how will that harm or affect society or if everybody makes the same decision or the majority makes this decision how will that affect um, society but libertarian philosophy really straight up just looks at force it looks at the force um, the forces primarily of government and how that impacts us it doesn't look at all the other institutions like the media the news media um, entertainment media advertising uh, white privilege or stereotypes how those play into um, you know uh, 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 individual liberties, right? How those play into the choices made by uh, individuals. I'm realizing now I'm probably totally backlit, but at least you can hear me. <laughs> probably sick of seeing me. Um, but yeah, libertarians don't trust governments straight up. I mean, you see, you see this, um, you know, with, with a lot of the uh, freedom fighters, you know, protesting all the COVID-19 stuff. Um, but the thing is, with all the people stormtrooping, you know, the state houses with their automatic weapons and their Walmart camo, is one of the things is they don't like the government, but they fail to remember that we are the government. The government represents us. Now, that's so incredibly true at like a state le level where, you know, um, where it's majority rules, you know, uh, versus an electoral college system. It's hard to look at, you know, the federal government and unless they win the majority vote, the, the, the president wins the majority vote. It's really hard to see them, um, you know, as us, right, because they won the majority of electoral votes. But that's a major, major thing is we often, when we think of many, you know, libertarians um, and these like, you know, pro-freedom uh, peeps, you know, they really forget that, you know, that's your government. Whether you voted for them or not, that's, that's your government. They're representing you and your interests. Okay.